Welcome back, students, to Chapter 18 of our Read Aloud of the Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. In this chapter, we're going to find a couple of vocabulary words. One is intrusive, which means uh, is an adjective for something that is unwelcome or bothersome. So if you, uh, the, if you are intruding on someone's space, you are too close. You are getting in their way. So intrusive has that same root word, like intruder. Um, you're coming into someone's space. You're bothering them. Clingy, really similar word, which is an adjective describing someone who is overly needy and demanding of attention. And so you see the picture here hasn't changed. The little girl is intruding on his space. She's being intrusive, and she's very clingy. She's demanding a lot of attention. Tentative is when you're not certain or sure of something. Sometimes people will say, let's put that tentatively on our calendar, meaning we're going to pencil it in, but it might change. So tentative means we're not sure about something quite yet. Picture of a pocket knife, we're going to see that in the book. And we're also going to see something that looks like this marionette. We're going to see um, Bryce taking twine and tying it to Edward's hands and legs and then controlling his movements with a piece at the top. So I just wanted to give you a visual picture of what we're going to see in the book. And then our last thing that we're going to see is a falling star. Somewhere in the story we're going to see reference to a falling star, which means a star that is looks like it is falling out of the sky and you can see the trail of it burning behind. Chapter 18. Bryce and Sarah Ruth had a father. Early the next morning when the light was gray and uncertain, Sarah Ruth was sitting up in bed coughing and the father came home. He picked Edward up by one of his ears and said, and said I ain't never. It's a baby doll, said Bryce don't look like no baby doll to me. Edward, hanging by one ear, was frightened. This, he was certain, was the man who crushed the heads of China dolls. Jangles, said Sarah Ruth between coughs. She held out her arms. He's hers, said Bryce. He belongs to her. The father dropped Edward on the bed, and Bryce picked up the rabbit and handed him to Sarah Ruth. It don't matter anyway, said the father. It don't make no difference, none of it. It does so matter, said Bryce. Don't you sass me, said the father. He raised his hand and slapped Bryce across his mouth. And then he turned and left the house. You ain't got to worry about him, said Bryce to Edward. He ain't nothing but a bully. And besides, he don't hardly ever come home. Fortunately, the father did not come back that day. Bryce went out to work, and Sarah Ruth spent the day in bed, holding Edward in her lap and playing with a box filled with buttons. Pretty, she said to Edward, as she lined up the buttons on the bed and arranged them into different patterns. Sometimes, when a coughing fit was particularly bad, she squeezed Edward so tight that he was afraid he would crack in two. Also, in between coughing fits, she took to sucking on one or the other of Edward's ears. Normally, Edward would have found intrusive, clingy behavior of this sort very annoying. But there was something about Sarah Ruth. He wanted to take care of her. He wanted to protect her. He wanted to do more for her. At the end of the day, Bryce returned with a biscuit for Sarah Ruth and a ball of twine for Edward. Sarah Ruth held the biscuit in both hands and took small, tentative bites. You eat that all up, honey. Let me hold Jangle, said Bryce. Him and me got a surprise for you. Bryce took Edward off in a corner of the room, and with his pocket knife, he cut off lengths of twine and tied them to Edward's arms and feet, and then tied the twine to sticks of wood. See, all day I've been thinking about it, Bryce said. What we're going to do is make you dance. Sarah Ruth loves dancing. Mama used to hold on to her and dance her around the room. You eating that biscuit? Bryce called out to Sarah Ruth. Uh-huh. You hold on, honey. We got a surprise for you. Bryce stood up. Close your eyes. 
he told her. He took Edward over to the bed and said, Okay, you can open them now. Sarah Ruth opened her eyes. Dance jangles, said Bryce, and then moving the strings with the sticks with his one hand. Bryce made Edward dance and drop and sway, and the whole while at the same time with his other hand, he held on to the harmonica and played a bright and lively tune. Sarah Ruth laughed. She laughed until she started to cough, and then Bryce laid Edward down and took Sarah Ruth in his lap and rocked her and rubbed her back. You want some fresh air? he asked her. Let's get you out of this nasty old air, huh? Bryce carried his sister outside. He left Edward lying on the bed, and the rabbit, staring up at the smoke-stained ceiling, thought again about having wings. If he had them, he thought, he would fly high above the world, to where the air was clear and sweet, and he would take Sarah Ruth with him. He would carry her in his arms, surely, so high above the world, she would be able to breathe without coughing. After a minute, Bryce came back inside, still carrying Sarah Ruth. She wants you too, he said. Jangles, said Sarah Ruth. She held out her arms. So Bryce held Sarah Ruth and Sarah Ruth held Edward and the three of them stood outside. Bryce said, you gotta look for falling stars. Them are the ones with magic. They were quiet for a long time all three of them looking up at the sky. Sarah Ruth stopped coughing. Edward thought that maybe she had followed, fallen asleep. There, she said, and she pointed to a star streaking through the night sky. Make a wish, honey, Bryce said, his voice high and tight. That's your star. You make a wish for anything you want. And even though it was Sarah Ruth's star, Edward wished on it too. Notice again how the author is bringing back this constant idea of stars. These stars we've learned before are a real symbol of comfort to Edward. And now as we look at it, the stars with Sarah, Ruth, and Bryce, we see that it's a source of comfort and hope for them too. And I'm wondering, what did Edward wish for? What did Sarah, Ruth wish for? Let's see what happens in the next chapter.